What's up everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Hackitech Playground. And today we'll focus on something which is, which is very close to my heart and that's chaos engineering. What it is, how it works, which platforms are on the market, that's the content for today. What is a chaos testing is a question of the day. Many companies are forgotten or they forgot the important chaos engineering platform or testing or engineering, whatever you will call it. And if you are practicing DevSecOps or Agile, you really want to know your resilience. You really want to know, you really want to know your security posture. You really want to know your security status of your clusters. You want to know if you are reaching your ITOs and RPOs, your SLAs. And this is the time when chaos engineering or testing comes in the game and help you to understand what will happen if there will be several critical problems in your production environment. You are testing the time changes. You will test uh, the DNS. You will test your HTTP protocols. If everything works fine, what will happen if one service will be disrupted? Will be there some chain of evidence or a chain of incidents that will happen in your production or everything will work fine or scale up? So chaos testing is not just a problem of cloud that I would like to talk about, but it's a testing of resilience and security of your environments. So how it fits into the DevSecOps? I didn't talk too much about what is DevSecOps and I, I will not talk about that today because we are talking about my favorite chaos engineering and I cannot stress enough how important this technique is. So where it fits in the DevSecOps? This is my personal map of DevSecOps from planning to monitoring. We need, don't need to talk too much about all the tools are there, which are there, but important is that there are plenty and plenty of the tools and operations and deployment is the phase where the chaos testing should be executed. When you do not have software running, when your infrastructure is not ready, you don't need chaos testing. But when it is or everything is up and running, then is the right time to test your resilience against attackers, disruptions, missing services, latency, uh, disabled ports in your Kubernetes, missing services in your cluster, all of these things. So. And when we will look closer for Gremlin or Chaos Monkey, they fit in the deployments and operations. They are not part of the build, but they can be. You can put them in the CI CD. You can also say that it is part of the testing when you have something ready because it's infinite cycle. DevSecOps is infinite cycle of securing, developing and operating your environment in, the, in like a effective manner, automated way uh, with the exchange of the information. So what is the chaos testing principle and its scary definition? Chaos testing by definition is a discipline of experimenting on distributed system in order to build in confidence in the system capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. So it do not targets your testing or staging environment. It targets your production systems. And here are a few examples of the tools, my favorite and like one of the most market developed tool and also commercial one is a gremlin. Uh, next one is Chaos Monkey. And that's one of the tools that it started it all in 2010, I think, with Netflix. They created their Simon army and we'll talk about that more in detail. Kube Invaders, really cool game as a chaos engineering. So gamification of engineering, you will love it. Chaos Smash or Chaos Cube and there are plenty of others depends on what you want to focus. So it's not just a cloud thing. You can test your Kubernetes, OpenShift, VMs. You can test your EC2 instances, Google Compute Engine, wherever you like. And that's the joy and that's the great thing on that. So where it begins or where was the beginning of the chaos engineering? The chaos engineering comes back to Netflix and their practices. They are releasing like astonishing amount of open source that will help you in many areas of your engineering. What is started with a security monkey. Security monkey monitors your GPCP or AWS accounts for policy changes and notifies you any discrepancies. So Simon Army was an 
army of the tools or army of monkeys that helps you in a specific cases, uh, mainly AWS environment. So when you will go to Chaos Monkey, I'm like talking about, it's a service that identifies a group of the systems and accidentally terminates one of them that you selected and service operates in the set at time and controlled manner. Important is that the chaos engineering is very controlled principle and very controlled process of disruption of your services. Another one is Conformity Monkey. It's a service that runs in the AWS uh, cloud and it monitors instances that do not meet predefined rules and best practices. You can do that today with, with the Security Hub uh, or Chef Inspect or many other tools even uh, security command center and gcp lots of lots of things can basically today help you with these things and that's maybe the, the reason why it doesn't exist anymore it's it's retired only good tool for current usage is a security monkey so chaos testing principle is defining different levels of chaos first one is a low chaos where the bugs are just causing minimal impact Medium chaos is a bigger failure with a short time of disruption. And basically you can notice that maybe for one hour, maximum two hours. It's a very small thing that do not deserve too much attention, but this is good. It is good to really notice that and make an evidence. Uh, with the high chaos, the service, whole services and applications are disrupted and high priority incidents should be raised. Then you can track your incident response. And the extreme chaos, like uh, AWS nukes and all other things like that, you can basically nuke, that means kill, not nuke, but kill one of your regions and disable all the services in the specific region or availability zone. So you are disrupting multiple services. And when you look how the chaos testing levels set up to the, the, the configuration of chaos engineering, you can schedule that. You can say it will run on a Monday, Tuesday, uh, at the specific hour, it will run on these kind of instances, this percentage will be, sh will be shot, or uh, it can run in cloud con container. It can be like, you are focusing on Docker containers, you are focusing on EKS cluster, or Kubernetes deployment. That's, that's really targeted, targeted technique. And you can also use different kinds of attacks. Resource state network. Resource basically on the instance resources, on its state and, and the network latency, DNS failures, and all of these things. And application failures. You can basically target application failures on the web application, API, or CLI control. Very simple. The principle is based on hypothesis. You create your hypothesis and then are trying to evaluate if your hypothesis is correct because you have some certain degree of unknown and this degree of unknown you are trying to re reduce it. So you create a hypothesis, then you combine it with your use cases that you want to that you want to specifically target, and then you test the production. You are trying to automate and build the continuous chaos with the CI/CD, for example, in GitLab. You can just call the API of Kremlin or any other tool that you like and execute specific uh, tests. So, and then what you are trying to do is reducing the damage as much as possible. Your goal is a resilience of your cluster. You are trying to test your failover. What will happen if one of the services will be killed? Will your system failing over? Uh, it is testing your cluster, your scaling, if, if, it is, if your system basically scales out or scales up. Uh, then the time event, this is really great for malware testing. What will happen in specific environment when, the, when there will be time changes? Dependency, so chain of the instances that are somehow interconnected. What will happen if one of them will be disrupted? And the scaling that are stage two. From the network status and resources perspective, you can test CPU, input, output, or memory. From the status, you can black hole the traffic, you can simulate the packet loss, you can increase or decrease the latency. And from the resources, you can shut down or kill specific resources, you can change the time, and you can kill specific processes that are very important for your Linux or Windows environment. Uh, and from the shutdown perspective, you can also kill the pods from the Kubernetes environment. Chaos testing with the gamification, I really like the gamification on this topic. So it's not a joke, it's a real story. You can gamify your chaos testing with, for example, Kube invaders. These uh, containers 
basically the bots can be killed by Kuba invaders, by a spaceship that you are killing the aliens and every alien is a specific bot. So every alien represents a bot. Every time when an alien is taken down, the service kills the bot and respawn can be measured. And you can show how often and how fast you respawn the containers and how fast the bots are created for you in the production environment. So failover testing can be measured also and Kubernetes in Kube Invaders uh, has been developed, developed under the default framework. So if you like homeworks and if you like to enjoy some interesting topics and if you want to try it at home, I have some exercise for you to test at home. Uh, create two different instances. Create two different instances, one with one Docker container, second with two different Docker containers. Play, for example, with the Kremlin and uh, try to connect it to the GitLab. You can put a load balancer in front of the, these two services to, make, to test your scaling. That, that will be maybe more interesting, but this is a very simple case for beginners and it's for fun. Then you can create a GitLab job for the chaos testing or stage for the chaos testing that will call the Gremlin API and execute the Gremlin agents in the instances and they will do specific attack for you. So test it at home and let me know how you went with that. So thank you and I hope that we will see each other in next session uh, where I will deep dive in Gremlin. It's time for some showcases. Let's go. Let's check together the GitHub open source platforms that can be very useful for us. Let's start with the Chaos Monkey. Chaos Monkey randomly terminates virtual machines, instances, and containers. It's a platform from Netflix and is one of the first chaos engineering platforms ever. For managing Chaos Monkey, you really need to have Spinnaker because Spinnaker is a continuous delivery platform from Netflix and the really tightly bound to each other. Chaos Monkey can be executed in AWS, Google Compute Engine, Compute Engine, Azure, Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry. So it depends on you, but there is something really, really important and it's dependence on Spinnaker. Another really great tool is KubeMonkey. KubeMonkey is uh, also implementation of Netflix Chaos Monkey for Kubernetes clusters. So this is the difference between Chaos Monkey and Kube Monkey. Kube Monkey is the Kubernetes focused or Kubernetes centric platform for engineers. It randomly deletes Kubernetes pods in the cluster and you can basically select specific options. Default behavior is a Kube Monkey to kill one and only pod in your application, but you can also kill all, you can kill fixed number of pods you can kill random but maximum percentage. So you define what is the maximum and it will select till the maximum and then the fixed percentage of your pods will be killed. So lots of really, really great features that you can, you can use out of the box. You can override the API server and there is really cool documentation. You can also run it in the Docker image and configuration is pretty well explained also on this repository. So I hope that you will have fun find a time with that or you will find a time where you can play with this tool and let's skip to the next one and that's my favorite it's basically space invaders or kuba invaders for kubernetes it's a gamification of the chaos engineering you can select specific pods and basically killing this, this pods by your spaceship and you are playing the game and when you basically kill the alien you kill the pod so it's pretty simple you can install it with home version 3 plus and basically there is one small point that you really need to consider. If you want to play with that with, with an EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service, it will not work for you because there is still the problems, there are still problems to fix with the service account. So it's not the best suit for EKS. So if you want to run it there, I don't recommend, but uh, there's also Grafana dashboard in, in the progress. Uh, lots of security notes and basically a very simple install installation. And if you are a fan of OpenShift from Red Hat, you can have fun with that too. Next one is a Chaos Mesh for, from Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Pretty easy, pretty simple. If you if you don't know this foundation, I really recommend to check it out. It's it's that like releasing lots of white papers, lots of interesting read for you. 
And there are like two main parts for, for this platform, it's operator, now it's fully open source and working. This operator is basically the Chaos Engineering Agent and the Chaos Dashboard, this is the web GUI for managing and monitoring your Chaos experience. But problem is that this is under development, so do not expect too much. The Chaos Operator is done, Chaos Dashboard not. And if you look at the controller and daemon, what you can do with, with your actions, you can kill the, kill the pod, you can fail the pod, you can kill specific containers, you can play with the network bandwidth, you can play with the network app, uh, IO delay, so you can delay input output burst, basically the CPU burn, memory burn, you can play with the clock. So lots of really cool features out of the box based on the open source. So Chaos Mesh is one of your choices. Next one is Chaos Cube, and based on the on the logo, you are you can be sure this is written in Go. If you look, this is Go, and why? Because you want to basically kill the pods, and you want to have your arbitrary experience. You can install it with Helm, very simple, and you can also filter the targets based on the labels, namespaces, and kinds. Very very cool filtering features. And if you do not want to run your experience experiments in a specific time, you can also define your exceptions and you can limit the kills for, for example, excluded weekends, excluded times, excluded days or the specific time zone. So you can have your exclusions. Another one is a Chaos Lambda, really simple one that you can basically use a Lambda for killing specific EC2 instances. But if you want to run like full-fledged AWS experiments, I recommend to use Fault Injection Simulator from AWS. And if you are having dabs within the Chaos Engineering. It's really cool to go to O'Reilly Katakoda. It's a learning platform. And for the Chaos Mesh, Kube Invaders, Kube Monkey, and Chaos Cube, there are some learning sessions that you can use. And how it works in AWS and Cloud at all. If you are new to AWS, you can put the EC2 user data directly through the console. So when you want to create a new instance, it's pretty simple. You will click on Launch an Instance, uh, select uh, AWS, Linux AMI, uh, whatever instance you, you really want to configure. And when you will go to instance details where you can configure the network, subnets, placement groups, uh, auto assigning the public IP, you can go down in the user data. And here you can supply the data that you want to put in the instance. And if you want to install the chaos testing agent for Kremlin, you can put your bash script or your commands that you really want to run after start as a bootstrap script into user data and then review and launch. So this is so simple and it's pretty easy. So if you are not very skilled and you are a beginner and you are just experimenting with AWS, that's, that's absolutely the great start for you. So there are several ways, if you are also a beginner, how to connect to your instance. Uh, when you will create a new instance, I recommend to use SSM Session Manager, which is System Manager Session Manager, where you need to have installed a SSM agent and have the right role to be able to access it. But I'll show you another, another way how to do that. When you will click here on connect, you will connect and you have several ways how to connect to your instance and install the agent. So recommended way is a session manager and to run the session manager on the instance, you need to have SSM agent installed on the instance. Then you need to have instance profile created for your chaos testing instance and the session manager setup will be incomplete uh, then if you have a problem, you can look at the prerequisites. So you can connect to your instance without SSH keys or bastion host. This is so-called bastion hostless connection and sessions are secured using AWS session, uh, session keys and the key management service. You can log the session commands so you will have full log of all the commands that are executed into your machine and you can configure session on the session manager preferences. You can also use SSH client and you can also use EC2 serial console. Easiest way is use an EC2 instance connect, which is emulated SSH connector connection. And I will use EC2 user because I don't have root here to, to connect. So when I will click to, to connect with my EC2 user, it will emulate an SSH connectivity to my instance. And I already did the installation process, which you can find on the Kremlin documentation and to start to Kremlin uh, agent, I will just write Kremlin in it. And then, then you need to fill your credentials. So basically 
you need to set up your team ID. When you go set up the team ID, then you can start to use it. But about that next time, and basically it takes the metadata, it sends the metadata to not all of them, but some of them uh, to Gremlin to identify the agent and to let you know what is the host name, what is the IP to be able to select the right instances. So that's all from how to connect and how to easily you know, start to set up. You can operate it without any party or anything, anything like that. You can do it directly from the console. If you are using Terraform for deploying your infrastructure as code, you can use multi-line data in the user data for the instance, for AWS instance. This bin bash script can be put it in EOF and basically install the agent and install all the dependencies that you really need. And at the same, same time, I really recommend to you to add the user Kremlin to the Docker group. I forget it several times and I spent several hours on debugging. And do not forget, if you want to play with the containers, add the Kremlin user to the proper group. Another way how to do that with AWS instance is using the function called file. File function can reference specific files in the user data. And in this case, when you look at the install agent sh, and it contains the bash script that we are using for installing the chaos testing agent. Very simple, very easy, and really fast. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I have lots of fun to giving you this information about the chaos engineering. Feel free to subscribe, hit the bell or comment and tell me because I'm very interested in how it works in your day by day life as an engineer, how it goes in your company or business. And what do you think about this practice of chaos engineering? So looking forward for next time.